friends of Quilt Roadies. How are you doing? I hope you're all well. I hope that you're finding comfort in your garden or your stitching, depending on which side of the world you're on. Right now in our world, it is exploding in the garden. The flowers have loved all the spring rain and they are more um, abundant than they have been in the last few years. I know that some of you are entering winter <laughs> and some of you have had no rain where you are. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry for that. I am so sorry for that. So today's quilt roadie is going to be just a catch up about what I've been up to because I have been a busy little bee in the hive. Uh, what did I do? I had a come to Jesus talk with myself uh, earlier in the week and I said, you can approach this week like you would normally, which is um, wait till the last minute and then it'll be sheer chaos and high anxiety and you'll make everyone around you want to not be around you. Or you can try and do something every day that is on the list to do. I, I know that this is a much more peaceful process. It's just never been a part of my life. But this week, I gave it my best effort. And I am here to tell you, I'm pretty darn pleased with myself. I, I mean, I, I, want, I want everyone around here, except for there's nobody but me here, to be cheering for me. I have all of my quilts uh, labeled, uh, all of my quilts, <laughs> it's so funny, I am so funny, uh, but I have the labels on my quilts for the quilt show, um, I have uh, the two quilts that my long arm quilter is going to be quilting for me in the backs all together, I actually this a couple of days ago opened two suitcases um, one for all the quilt paraphernalia and one uh, for uh, the smaller one for my clothes <laughs> it's it's a garbage truck free-for-all out there <laughs> think green think clean how nice Okay, back to that. So I actually, a few days ago, opened two suitcases and set them on the floor. Uh, kind of like a, a touchstone or a reminder and that this, that it was going to get busier. So I, uh, earlier this week, um, started thinking about organizing. <laughs> so this is my process. I usually think about it, forget about it, and then the night before or the day of do it. I'm the kind that when I travel I might take dirty clothes with me and do laundry on the other end. Yeah, I know, you're thinking, oh, who is this person and how does she ever get anything done? It's an interesting oxymoron about how an ADHD brain works. It's usually panic, sheer chaos, and a celebration <laughs> somewhere at the end of it. So I, uh, back to my suitcases, I've got the suitcases going. I, um, yesterday I uh, finished up all the labels on the quilts. I had a previous video showed you I got all the backing ready, so those are packed. Um, I have a bag packed that's going to my friend Caker's. Um, and, and in the meantime, 
I started cutting out a quilt and and so I have my I started my little nine patch blocks aren't they gonna be cute yeah my little nine patch blocks out of the um, the jelly roll uh, pack from so yeah um, so I started that on a whim like I needed to start a quilt right then I yeah and so you know it's it's kind of like um it it's just interesting I have been enjoying um, with each thing that I get organized I feel a sense of completion like I made a doctor's appointment for G that I've been putting off making and finally I got it on the books well that was like I you know in my other life my stitch roadie life I get stars <laughs> I think I need to get stars and quilt roadies it's just that it would take too many stars to to do that you know, it would be just, um, <laughs> and then yesterday I was looking at the quilt on the wall and I need to talk to my friend, um, Lori, because I suddenly looked at, I'm looking at this quilt on my design wall and I'm thinking that there's some Y seams in there. I, I've been looking at it and looking at it, and I don't see how the blocks can go together. I'll show you. I'll try to move you very slowly around. Okay, so we're going to move very slowly around. Sorry for my hand picture. Um, so that quilt there, uh, almost all of the blocks are done stitching. I mean, they are extraordinary. And this was a Yoko Saito um, block of the month. And the reason I did this block of the month is at the time Primitive Gatherings was doing it as a block of the month in muted um, more primitive color wools. And I just fell in love with it. And but when I looked, uh, yesterday I was in a fugue state and I was just staring at it. Not really because I wanted to do something with it, but because I just needed to give my brain a rest. So I was just looking at it and suddenly uh, my brain clicked in to what I was looking at and I said, I do not see how that actually can go together without one Y seam. There's got to be a Y seam to get that whole thing together. Yeah. Or two Y seams. So, there we go. <laughs> See what happens if I sit too long? I am thinking that my mind wanders and I guess that's the that's the way that it is um, for all of us huh I'm gonna put you down here so that you don't get too too crazy dizzy <laughs> and then um, you know the the I you know I've been working on my happiness um, agenda and by that I mean I've been trying to stay in a more positive uh, mode which means that I'm not watching um, a lot of the news although I am paying attention uh, to a little bit of local stuff um, I check in on the the uh, hearings and the major news of the day the Supreme Court rulings the new nomination that's going to be um, stepping up to the plate <laughs> I wish her the best um, 
But other than that, I have tried to make my life a balance. I have tried to make it a balance. I um, I think that that is the only way <laughs> for me <laughs> to keep moving forward, to keep moving forward. Or I want to just uh, uh, put my head in the sand, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So I've been working on a lot of little things. And I have gotten a couple of comments about people missing the tutorials. And I, I realize that they are a benefit. I do have to explain that my tutorials are not... Um, like, by no means am I um, a teacher. I am a sharer. And what that means is for me, when I'm uh, showing something, is to share with how I would do it. Not necessarily the best way to do it, or the quickest way to do it, but the way that I discover that works for me. And I will try to figure out a couple of tutorials in the future, but they take having G involved in the actual videoing because I don't have the setup, nor do I want the whole setup for, you know, the camera angles and holding the camera and stuff. We're, we're a pretty mom and pop kind of store. <laughs> basic, basic, if you know what I mean. And he has his own hobbies and all, all, all the things that he loves. And so, um, for me, you know, I can drag him in and and he does all my editing. So, um, that's a lot for me to ask of him. Give up his time. <laughs> but this last week I did um, start doing an... Uh, you know, sewing my little nine patches. I just love this bright little animal fabric. I also went back to um, my salvage pin cushions. And so I put together four uh, pin cushions so far. So, And these salvage pin cushions are just so much fun to make and the selvage on fabrics I mean you could you could use just strips of fabric you could just use complementary strips of fabric like you were putting a quilt together but I really like using the selvage because we usually throw it away and when you put the selvage sewn together it makes for a fun message sometime, like this one says Spooktacular Eve, and then it has the whole color um, that's in the fabric. And what these colored dots, for those of you who may not know, is um, it tells you every single color dye that is used within a print. So according to uh, Jen Kingwell, um, who's an amazing designer, you can actually, when you're shopping, if you're going and you want to make a quilt and you have all, a lot of the fabrics already pulled, like you bought this, this particular fabric, spectacular, um, and you just need complementary fabrics. You can actually just take the salvage strip with the colored dots to the fabric store and you can buy complementary fabrics because this is telling you what colors were used in the uh, print that it's on. So that was a great little tip. But the best thing about these salvages in my mind is that fabric companies in recent years have gotten even more creative. They not only name their fabrics fun names, but they, um, whereas, you know, this is like 
the little colored dots. That's pretty. But little colored elephants is even more fun. Now this is working the same as the little colored dots, but it's little elephants. Come on, give me a break. And then, you know, this is called Friendship Ring, so I used that part in this um, salvage pincushion. And then this one is Pearl Essence by Galaxy and Star Wars. Yeah. So these make fun, fun little gifts, and they're fun to make. And the way I make them is I cut out a square of whatever size you want, you know, but this looks like about a three and a half, maybe four inch square of muslin. And then I cut my strips of uh, salvages and I, you can fussy cut the salvages and, and I move them around till I get the color combination that I want. And I just straight stitch them on one on top of the other so that all the edges of the salvage uh, strips are sewn down onto the muslin. And then I take a piece of, a second piece of muslin with some SF-101 Pellon fused onto the back of it. And then I put right sides together. I leave an opening See, there's just a little opening there, and uh, I just sew around the edge, right sides together, and then I turn it inside out. Now that is the most challenging part because I tend to not want a big opening, so it uh, is like birthing a baby. It's like birthing a baby, and uh, a difficult birth. The pincushion is a difficult birth. And I did these. Um, I birthed all these pincushions while I was doing a um, Zoom call with a girlfriend uh, for our book meetup. And then what I do is I buy this, uh, they call it, they call it, um, like, lizard something. You get it at the pet store. It's actually like just crushed walnut shells in a big bag. I get it at the pet store and I pour, uh, I refill my jar every so often and I have a funnel. And I just take that little pin cushion and I put my funnel in there and then I just pour And then that, that um, lizard stuff, it's for the bottom of their cages, like if you have a pet lizard. And so I just kind of let it, let it sink down there, and I keep moving it down. These are so fun to make, you know, and and they're kind of like um, what I'm doing with my pillowcases, you know, make a pillowcase a month, you know. So I need a little bit more, and after a while you can tell how much of it you need by the feel or what you want it to be like. There's no like set rule, like you don't have, it's not like a recipe where you have to put a cup of this stuff in. No, it's however you want it to feel. And so I'm just filling it up, and I poke it down, and I fill it up. And yes, I have spilled this stuff all over my sewing table. No big deal. I just sweep it back into the jar. These are so much fun. And when I, um, I made one for each of my, um, 
fabric stalkers when we went on retreat one time. It was fun to just give them each a pin cushion that I'd made. And it, and it was, you know, when I was making them, I was thinking about each one of them. And so I have, I have a lot of that crushed walnut shells and so then I kind of move it around. I close, I pinch the top closed while I'm squishing it around and I see do I want to add any more? Yeah, I could add the last little bit in the jar. Might as well and then I'll refill the jar with the big bag because it comes like in a 10 pound bag or something. So the thing about this stuff is that <laughs> it's like sand. Like if you've gone to the beach, it's like you find sand in cracks you didn't realize, and there it just sand all. You know what I'm talking about. Well, this stuff is like all over. I mean, just even from putting the funnel into my pincushion and filling this up very carefully, mind you, I can see little bits of this on my table. So when I'm sewing it closed, I don't want more of this all over the place. So there's, I have a little bit of space. I never fill it totally to the top because you're going to end up with this stuff all over. And what I do is I get my, my polyfill and I stick it in that hole. And it acts as a stopper. And I just keep shoving it in, and it fills up that little empty space. I'm really excited about um, the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, you know. It, this year it feels kind of like the old days, or the pre-pandemic days, I should say. I mean, I'm really anxious. Jackie Erickson, who works at the Stitching Post and has been part of the quilting community in Sisters for as long as I've been quilting, and um, actually the Fabric Stalkers and I uh, took uh, our wonky log cabin class from her, which was nothing but a great time. If you ever want to take a class at the Quilters Affair that's like a no-brainer and is only going to be fun and a wonderful outcome, and it's offered, take that wonky, um, wonky log cabin. I'm still stitching, I'm still stuffing that in there. I'm bound and determined to get every last bit of that wad in there. But yeah, Jackie's the featured quilter at the quilt show, which I think is just going to be extraordinary. And if you follow her on Instagram, you probably have seen uh, some of her creations that she has done, which is really awesome. I definitely have to get a raffle ticket for the raffle quilt that's being raffled off, and Jean Wells um, created with her line of fabric. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. So I got that all wadded up in there. And then I'm just going to kind of press the, the, the little lizard stuff around. And I can adjust it even more as I go. And then now all I have to do is to sew that top. And see how I don't have to deal with all of that uh, when I'm sewing and manipulating this. I don't have to end up with that uh, walnut shells all over my sewing table. It stays in there. It's like a... It's like a a stopper, a stopper for stuff. And then I sew this closed 
with just a needle and thread using the ladder stitch. You know, it's kind of a, it's a simple, um, at least I call it a ladder stitch. It might be called something else. But, um, so I just hide my knot inside and then um, I take a stitch just very much at the top. I take a stitch with my needle across to close it up and then before I pull it tight I go through this loop and it kind of creates this line across the top of it and I just do that all the way across and then I knot it at the end and then I bring the needle down through the pincushion and up somewhere uh, with the tail I have been watching a show that um, a friend recommended and I still don't know quite what's going on but I, I felt the need to kind of give up my reruns for a while. I, I felt like I was being hypnotized and so I decided to try something new but I, I didn't want anything gross but I wanted something engaging, you know, and and this was um, with two veteran actors. And let's see, I think it was on Amazon Prime. Um, Sissy Spacek, you know, we haven't seen, I haven't seen her anyway in quite a while. And, um, and then you'll recognize her husband in this because um, he's like he's like one of those veteran character actors of course for the life of me off the top of my head I can't remember his name but you'll recognize him right away and so I'm just going across the top just like I did I'm taking a little bite bringing the two edges together and then going through the loop and pulling it down and this really locks that edge together. Uh, so back to the TV show. So it's just in its first season. And it's called uh, Night Sky. Night Sky. And it's kind of like a... Uh, it, it's definitely sci-fi, but what really attracts me to it is that it's a couple that's like our age and and the things they're going through as they age and and then there's this weird um you know there's this weirdness too and uh and thank goodness so far anyway there's not a lot of blood and guts but um I've been enjoying it. So we've been kind of binging two episodes a night. I think there's eight in the first season. And it took me, you know, I mean, the first show I was kind of like, I'm not too sure about this. But then by the second show I realized, oh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in for the full meal deal. So we've been watching that, and um, and then I'm finishing up. Uh, I I know the library yanked back the book um, that I was into the middle of Finding Dorothy, which was about um, um, Frank 
Balm's, uh, the uh, author of The Wizard of Oz. And um, it's a totally enjoyable book. It's a totally enjoyable book. I just love it. And it reminds me so much about that period of time and about the original making of the movie The Wizard of Oz and and uh, yeah so uh, that book is definitely I think would be a good read for anybody yeah G's gonna be for a while holding the fort down while I'm gone and watering the plants and then he'll meet up with me for the show. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody we haven't seen in a long time. Lots of activities going on. Oh, I'm almost done. Threaded my needle. Think of all the DNA that's on thread. <laughs> so I would love to get some book recommendations from all of you. I have been ta paying attention to what you're watching. Some of you have dropped comments and shared with me what you're watching. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I just had it threaded and then I dropped it and it unthreaded itself. <laughs> Isn't that the way? <laughs> yeah. There we go. It's just um, today is um, was really sunny this morning. Lots of sun outside and now the clouds have moved in but the temperature is nice. It's in the 70s. So for those of you that are suffering you know 100 degree heat I know that you're going oh just I would love that. You know last night G and I sat outside and had dinner. It was so lovely. Okay, so I'm down to the end, and I'm just going to make a knot. Kind of a, a double knot there. And then all I do is I stick the needle in and push it up further down the pin cushion to drag that thread over to help just even get it a little bit more secure in that pin cushion. And then, how fun is that? Pin cushion all done. Pin cushion all done. And then I just kind of squish it around. Yeah, so. They're so easy to make and they're so much fun. They're so much fun. The other uh, project that I um, I just went bonkers for was um, I had received, um, do you remember that uh, jelly roll of the threads that bind by um, Blackbird design from the Fat Quarter Shop, and I made the spool quilt out of the book pre-cuts 
um, quilts uh, from pre-cuts pre that actually I'm going to be taking down to get quilted. Um, you know, I had leftover um, pieces, and so I decided to sew all the two and a half inch squares together and make a project bag with the fabric, the sampler fabric by uh, Blackbird Design as the front. And in my Stitch Roadie life, I had finished a, um, um, a project that I thought would be excellent on a project bag. And I'll show it also um, on the Stitch Roadie. So this might be double. You'll get a double view. But I used the pattern. I used the instructions from the Moda Bake Shop, and it's linked on my blog on the side, but I will definitely be putting that in the um, description box, along with the link to the video where I did a step-by-step -step about making, and, and this was a few, uh, a few years back that I made a project bag when I was um, wintering in Arizona. Uh, what I can tell you from the Motobake shop instructions is that you can actually make this any size. You just have to follow the steps. So if you have a certain size you want, you, you don't have to cut it to the size that the Motobake shop um, pattern tells you. You just have to follow the steps of how it, construction goes together, if that makes sense. So I had all these two and a half inch squares and I sewed them together. And then I had um, uh, a piece of uh, cross stitch that I had finished and I wanted to mount it on the back of the project bag. And so I did that and I just love how it turned out. So this is the back of the bag. So those are leftover squares. You know, you got to just keep using up your fabric. And then there's the cross stitch that I did. And how I mounted that onto the back is that once I made the two and a half inch square little quilt, I put batting, fusible batting, a uh, scrap that I had. And I put this fabric this thread that binds fabric, the same size as the back, and then I quilted it, cross-hatched it. And then once it was made into like a quilt sandwich and it was all quilted, then I took my cross-stitch and I fused Pellon SF-101 on the back of it to give it um, Kind of stability and to kind of make all those thread ends kind of so they're never going to come loose. And I folded under about a quarter inch the edge and I steamed the edge so that it would stay down. And then I pinned it to the back and I buttonhole stitched it on my sewing machine. So you can see that I just went around the edge and buttonhole stitched it onto my quilt. And then I followed the instructions on how to create the front of the project bag with the zippered pouch, you know, and attach the binding and so now what's left is I have to tack down the binding just like a regular quilt binding and I'm going to do that today and I just love how it came out it just is adorable it's absolutely adorable um, yeah sometimes you do things and they just make your heart sing. I also wanted to just show you this one more thing before we go because someone asked me how I transfer um, my embroidery design onto fabric 
and whatever fabric you choose, and mostly you choose, um, most of the time when you're transferring to an embroidery, you're using a really light print or a muslin or a, um, you know, so that the embroidery will show up. And what I do is I take my fabric before I fuse, the, this is SF101 on the back, before I fuse it on there, I use my Miso light table. Um, it has been a workhorse for me forever. I will never do any other kind of light table because this thing is so reasonable, so sturdy, and you know, why? Why when something works, you know, that old saying, whatever that saying is. So I put my fabric, I put my pattern on the light table, and then I put my piece of fabric on top of that patterner, pattern, and I tape it with um, masking tape. And then I use like the .01 brown micron pen. It's the skinniest pen, micron pen available, and I trace directly onto my fabric. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't show up after you've embroidered. So here's one that I have already traced onto, <coughs> you know. And then once I have it traced on there, I adhere the SF-101 to the back, and I start embroidering. And you know, some of my favorite embroidery patterns are Gale Pans and uh, Jen uh, uh, Meg Hockey's uh, Crab Apple Hill. So here I'm already starting to embroider. And where you embroider does not, the pen doesn't show, it's covered by your embroidery floss. <coughs> so that answers the question of of how I prep my embroidery. And here, here's another one by um, Gail Pan. And this is on a, another piece of type of cotton fabric. And you can see the design. So I hope that answers uh, some questions that a few of you had. Well, I think it's time for me to get working on my list. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for listening to me babble. And we'll see you a little bit down the road. Love you guys. Subscribe, thumbs up please, and we'll see how this journey goes forward through the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show.